Brother Floyd, you would like to say a prayer for us to start our service? Can we start now? Yeah, we'll get ready to start. I'll say it later. I've got the most full of food, but I'm going to say it. Okay. Heavenly Father, we do come to you tonight and we thank you that we can gather here and follow the great persecution and all. And yes. We take it for granted that we can come to places and all. Some places can't do that. You're trying to worship it, right? But they, they've got to hide and all the worship. But we can come in here and all. And we thank you for what you're doing. And we got some people, it looks like maybe mixing tonight. And I hope everything's all right. We know everybody in. And, uh, Young and shooting inside here and all the different months we miss them. And, uh, but we thank you for the ones that's here that got here safe and all. And, and we want to not only come here, we want to leave here stronger and better than we came in here. We just want to grow a little bit and all. We thank you for Alan too, as he wants his health and all. He don't he don't he don't look at his stuff all that. He knows you the ones giving him the strength. He shouldn't be doing this. It's helping good enough for him. But see, you 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 great as he than you than he does in this world, and you for him and no it make no difference who's against him. And so give him his strength to go on and all and even <laughs> these men, even these men here, I just think about them, they got good wives and all, and I know they thank you for them that they got good wives because they said that's what makes a good man is having a good wife and all and not only having a good wife is having Christian wives and all so be with us and God and lead us and we pray for these ones that's hurting we know that we got some that's hurting here we know Chris is going back to his barn land his trouble tear his head and his legs and all giving him trouble and he's dead and all and different things but that's just showing that he loves you more than he loves himself and he's going on and all but be with all of them. Some of these people in here tonight, I don't know. Some of them might have a little, they don't know we got some health issues here. And, uh, and all. So we pray for that too, that there be some healing now. But again, we don't want to take this for granted because we don't know when this will come to end. But thank you for what you did. We thank you that you said, I love them. We almost send them and I'm going to shed my blood. Let some sons shed their blood. And, and he was persecuted. He was persecuted. Shedding his blood for us, and we were all his enemy, but he loved us and died for us. The Holy Spirit, we grieve you all the time. Thank you for putting up with us. Help us and God and lead us now. And God, I thank you as you look down on us today. There may not be many here, but we can go it in great numbers when we leave here with your help. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. 435. 435. Angels from the realms of glory. No, 435. 435. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, too. That's all right. <laughs> but no, we're human. We're human. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. 
It's a Christmas movie. It's, uh, it's called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. And if you get a chance to see it, you need to go see that thing. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those that's showed every, shown every year, I'm thinking. Yeah. It was just wonderful. I, I'm glad it was in the dark. I had tears down my face for about the last 25 minutes. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, was it at a movie theater? It was. It was at one that's... Uh, I don't know the name of it. Chester Cinema Cafe. Chester Cinema Cafe. It's really inexpensive too. It's like, especially for old folks. Yeah. It like it's like it was like twelve dollars for two people. Wow. And then if you want any food, they come to your check seat and, oh, and really? ask you what you want. Take an order just like you're in a restaurant. And then at the end, they come back and uh, just like in a the restaurant, they leave you a little bill. You know, on a little tray thing, and they clean up after you, and, and the seats go back. Oh, They're really God. comfortable. It's great. Well, now, what was the name of it? The best Christmas pageant ever. Best Christmas pageant ever. Yeah. Yeah. Donna had seen it before me and insisted that I go see. In fact, she was just bugging me. That scene. <laughs> she wanted you to cry. Now I know why. She couldn't see me in there. It was dark. Did she cry too? I didn't look. I was scared. <laughs> it was dark. It was good. Yeah, it was dark. But you know, just talking about that, Alan, I mean, there's so many, most of them are bad, but it's still, the door can use, there's still some kind of movies out there that's, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. That, that one definitely was. I was very surprised how good it was. Okay, we're in Acts 14. John said, as soon as I walked in today, are we going to be in Acts tonight? <laughs> he said this is like part 40. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but it's close, I guess. All right, we're in Acts 14. We're going to read verses 5 through 20. Uh, part 50 today. Part 50. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> and we're halfway through. There's 28 chapters, so so there'll be 100 parts. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Acts 14. We're going to uh, read 5 through 20. We've done some of the other verses a little bit, so. Verse 5, chapter 14, verse 5. And when there was an assault made, both of Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it, and they fled into the Lister and Derby, cities of Laconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lister, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. 
The same word Paul spake, speak, he steadfastly behold, steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, or Zeus, yeah. and Paul they called Mercurius, or Hermes, uh, because he was the church chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice for the people, which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying and saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither a certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came unto the city, into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. But we see uh, uh, this healing going on, and uh, we're going to may have time to get into that. We, I got caught part way down, so. We won't wait. We may not spend a lot of time in there. But we know uh, what we've seen here. Paul and Barnabas had preached in Iconium and a great multitude believed. We remember that. And then, in spite of opposition there in Iconium, mainly from the Jews, they had continued there boldly declare, declaring the word of grace, the gospel. We talked about that last week. Having been granted the witness of signs and wonders the same as Jesus had, as well as those he sent out to the cities where he himself would come. So talk about this, that they, they got these, uh, the power of God was there with their witness. And so there were signs and wonders which drew more people and more people believed them because of the signs and wonders. Uh, now that includes back in Iconium, the same thing had occurred. Right. Remember, they stayed there and there were all of these signs and wonders. The same thing that Jesus did. We, we, read, we read that last week. Exactly the same way Jesus worked. And if you'll remember when he sent out the forty, uh, the, the uh, 12 and then the 70, they also had those same powers to cast out demons and so forth. So this was the, the way that God was operating, that Jesus was operating in building his church. Um, Prove he's God, tell them the gospel, and by faith they, they would be saved. That was the way it would work. And then these people that got saved, their, their whole deal would be, I'm a witness to what they did. Remember the resurrection of Jesus? That was a big deal. Those who saw that resurrection, that's all they preached for a long time because they were the only ones that had seen a resurrected Jesus. Those, those few people. So whenever they told the gospel, they would tell about, no, I talked to him. I saw him. We ate with him. I, I reached my finger into his side and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. They saw, they knew that he was resurrected. So um, they were, they were witness. That's a sign and a wonder also, right? On the day of Pentecost, were there signs and wonders? Oh, yeah. Yes, when Peter preached that little tiny message and 3,000 were saved, is there, are there signs and wonders? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, think about what we're saying. All of this was like, it's miraculous. And that's the way everything was being dealt with. So that's what, that, that's what, what we have talked about last week, including the, the idea that um, 
the word of grace is the, 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 the terminology for the gospel because it, that's what it is. It's, it's God's grace being shown in uh, that we only by faith, only by believing, uh, can we be saved. And that's by His grace. Um, then, uh, again, last week, they hear that plans were underway to stone them. We just read that. So they, they fled to the next towns and the area round about, which would have been here in Lystra. That's where we are in verse 6. They fled unto Lystra and Derby cities of Lyconia and into the region uh, round about. So that would be the surrounding areas. They were at first at Lystra. Lystra was 20 mile, miles south, about 20 miles south. And it was rough terrain, even there. Everything that they're, they've gone through so far is a lot of mountains in that right. area, evidently. Uh, Derby, on the other hand, which will be the next city, was 60 miles east of Iconium. So that was a pretty good distance right there. So here in verse 7, that's about where we are now. There they preached the gospel of Lystra. There were probably just a few Jews, and we know that because if there was a certain number of Jews, they always would form a synagogue. They would meet somewhere. There was no synagogue there. Remember, every place they've gone so far, the first thing you do is they go find a synagogue. And they would preach to the Jews first. And we've seen where the Gentiles would hear and say, preach to us, preach to us. And the Jews would reject them for the most part, but the Gentiles uh, would uh, really latch on to that gospel and believe. Okay, so so they they preached just to the, the, the locals, the, the Gentiles. They're preaching to the Gentiles there, but there are some Jews there, of course, but there, there's no mention of this Jews and Gentiles. The Jews are going to come over. We, we saw that. The Jews come over and mess with them. If you look here, um, look at verse 19. Just read it, but look at it. After all the, this preaching and this, this healing is going on, there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, the same ones that had chased them out of town, and then threatened to stone them, they're following them again. We're going to see that with Thessalonica also later on in Acts. They form a church in, in Thessalonica, and they have to get out of there because they're, they're, they get threatened. They go to Berea, and those same Jews follow them to Berea. They, they just like would not let it go. They thought that they were blaspheming their God, Jehovah God. Um, so they just wouldn't let it go. Uh, we know that it was really of Satan rather than any deep belief. Right. Um, so we see uh, it's a single-mindedness, doing the will of God. Uh, they already demonstrating the heart and mind of bond servants. They're completely sold out. They preach, they get booted out of Iconium. They preach, they get threatened with death in, in uh, well, I got that wrong, not, not Iconium, a Antioch, a Pisidia first. They get booted out. They go to Iconium, they get threatened with stoning, so they get out of there, but they preach again. That, that's what they're doing, single-mindedness, single-mindedness. Uh, we spoke of that. They're sold out to the cause of Christ. They're captured completely in God's love and in his intent for their lives. I think that's all there is. And they were right. That is all there, there was for them. Um, and it brings us to chapter, verses 8 through 10. We're going to read those again, verse 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man that lived for impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly and beholding him, perceiving that he had faith, to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright and lift thy feet. And he leaped and walked. So we see this continuing granting of signs and wonders by the Lord, right? That's what we followed this last week, week before that. The Lord, and uh, we've mentioned already this evening, that was God's pattern. Now remember, this is the earliest church. The apostles are still alive, the ones that followed Jesus, right? The apostles. And even when Jesus was there, the ones he sent out also were granted that power. So this is a continuation of that. 
It's a continuation of all of those things. This is proof that they are from God. Why did Jesus do it? Proof that he's from God. It's, it's a, absolutely the same deal, the same pattern, whatever you want to talk, uh, call it. Um, the same pattern, the same granting of signs and wonders by the Lord continues here with the healing of that man that had never walked. Um, we see here the wonderful work of Jesus uh, promised as he walked the earth as a man. Jesus had promised this, that this was going to happen. When, and I picked out a, a section of John. We mention John 14 quite often. It's a real good chapter. So we're going to be there most of the evening. Well, we can look at this healing first. So let's look at this healing first. We can see uh, impotent in his feet, crippled from his mother's birth, uh, from his mother's womb, had never walked. Remember, do you remember the guy Peter? Yeah. Dealt with us same way. He was above 40 years old and never, never walked, right? Uh, in that instance, Peter actually gave him his hand to get him up. But then afterwards, the guy leaped and hollered and partied and was all over the place. Wouldn't let Peter go. He was all over Peter and we saw the crowd. No kidding. The crowd was watching uh, the, the whole deal. Um, we see that, look at verse 9. The same, this man, this uh, man that could not walk, heard Paul speak. And Paul was looking at him very closely. And he perceived that um, he had the faith to be healed. So I think what he saw was the exact opposite of what we see sometimes in church services. Sometimes we see fluttering eyelids and drooling faces and <laughs> just plain. We, he, this guy was pretty much, he was into what the, the Peter, uh, not Peter, Paul, is preaching. It had gotten his attention, and it looked like, um, uh, to Paul, looking at him, like, this is the thing that I should do. And so he does. Does he pray there? We don't even see prayer there. That's an important thing to think about. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. That, that prayer, um, because Jesus promises these powers to those who ask him. We're going to see that, okay? But we don't always have to ask. Do we have anyone dwelling within us that does yeah. the asking for us sometimes? Because we don't know what we need. All right. and, and Paul is in this place, never been there before. Paul and Barnabas. And somebody asked for him, right? Because how did he know? He, he, of course, I don't know, just acting out on faith. But someone got that power for him. Um, Holy Spirit did. And so he's healed. He stands up and healed. Now, that, that leads to this just crazy reaction from the crowd. But it's not really that crazy. Because these people had lived... And their parents and their parents and their parents, just like the Jews, there's only one way of thinking. This is what the Jewish way. Everything else is wrong. That's why they couldn't include Jesus. You know, well, he's coming. He just hasn't gotten here. It's not that man. Well, Galilee, you got to be kidding me. Nazareth, what good thing comes out of those towns, you know? So you see, these people are worshipers of these Greek gods, you, you, you've seen that Thor and Zeus and all of that junk, you know, those mythology things yeah. that we, we read. But they actually believed they were gods. Um, later on, Paul gets to Athens, and um, he's completely overcome as he sees all is wholly given to idolatry, right? And he preaches to them the unknown God, which was our God. They didn't know about that God, the real God. Anyway, so it's not that crazy, but it, it almost got Paul killed because they waded into that crowd and they had some nasty Jews that had arrived and the Jews fired everything up and got him stoned, but he survived. Anyway, let's look at this, this <clears throat> idea that what we're seeing, because I think it's important to study this, 
and look at it at least in, in the limited way, way that we will tonight. Uh, Jesus promises a wonderful work to his apostles, to the people that he's talking to. Remember John, turn to John 14. We'll look real, real close to what I'm talking about. In John 14, while you're turning, I'll start. John 14, 1, but that's not where we're staying. We're actually going to skip down to verse 9, but here, here's the whole deal. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And, and what he's doing is saying, yes, I am leaving. But he says, don't let your heart be troubled. We're only getting part of the conversation here, right? Not everything is recorded. He's been with his disciples. Remember, chapter 13 is the Last Supper, right? Right. And he's telling them what's going on because it's the Last Supper because he's going to die. He's going to his execution. So he's telling his disciples things that are going to come about. Yes, you're troubled. Imagine the weight of the world on them. Yeah, they found that one of their own is a traitor. It's a, it's a horrible time on them. They're just heavy, right? And so he, here's the hope. I'm coming back. I'm going to receive you myself. I'm going to meet you, and you'll never be away from me, and I'll never be away from you again, right? We talked about that a few several months ago. All right. The wedding, the wedding, the church, and the bridegroom and, and the bride, right? The church and Jesus Christ wedded ceremony right after the rapture. Yes. What's going down here on earth during that time? Worst time the earth has ever gone through. Right. Tribulation. And when Jesus comes back to end the reign of the Antichrist, he's bringing us with him. We will never be apart from him. Pretty good, huh? We meet him there in the air. He takes us with him. There's a marriage ceremony. The tribulation ends. When Jesus comes back, we're still with him. And thus we shall ever be with the Lord. Right? right. So that's the background of all of this. All right? It's a big deal. He's telling them stuff they need to know. There's going to be comfort there. Huge comfort. He's leaving them. You've got to remember, all of these men had left everything, everything, to, to follow him, some without question. I mean, it was like, okay, you know, my dad, you know, they say Zebedee was what, John and James? No, was that James and John, right? Yeah. Brothers? See, see you, Zebedee. Son to Bye, see you later, and let's go. And, and uh, who was that, the tax collector? Was that Matthew? Matthew. Saying, uh, no more. And, uh, you know, they just left. Now he's leaving. They're, he's their source of everything that they ever would need, right? And they love him uh, unconditionally, like he loves them, and um, as close as they could anyway. So th that's that's the, the background. So let's read here. I want to read verse 9. Uh down a ways, I'm not sure, 18, 9 to 18, I think, chapter 14. And we're looking here for a wonderful, wonderful promise, and, and, and we're going to look at how it works because it's important. It helps us understand these words. Now think about what we're looking at in Acts so far. What we've seen is signs and wonders and salvation. Yes? That's what we've seen. Now uh, let's, let's look at this. Jesus is still on the earth during this chapter 14. Now, he is not on the earth in Acts, right? Okay, so right. something's going to change, but he's going to give them great, great promise <clears throat> concerning all of that. Uh, so let's look at verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, talking about Philip, have I been so long time with you, yet thou hast, hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? 
<laughs> Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Why did I speak unto you? I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believeth me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Take a look. See what I'm talking about here. I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I want you to look at that. Then I'll, I'll finish the last two verses. Look at that last part. But you know him. But you know him. You know the Holy Spirit. You just don't know you know him. Look. For he dwells with you. That's present tense. And shall be in you. Wow. Do you see where God, Jesus is? See. Now go back up. Verse 16 another comforter. The first comforter was with them right then. That's who he's talking about. You know him because he's with you. The man talking to him is who he's talking about, Nick himself. But I'm leaving him. He shall be in you. Right. See the difference? Mm -hmm. I'm walking with you three and a half years as a comforter as an intercessor, as the one that goes alongside you as your helper in all things, now, but he shall be in you, right? Holy Spirit, in, in us, right? Comfort, we know that, right? But I just thought that that was an interesting verse right there. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live Ye shall live also. Okay, so let's look at these. I'm going to go right back to verse 9. I want to go to something, just a little blurb for some of these verses, starting in verse 9. So if you follow along, we can, we can get some good stuff out of these verses tonight. Very usable things in our, in our lives. It'll, it'll bring us closer. We love him more because of this plan. We see this plan, what he has done. So in verse 9, we see uh, these words. So let's go back to verse 9. Jesus said to him, I have been so long time with you, and you has not known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. So this is a reply to Philip's request. Philip had said this, Lord, show us the Father, and, and it'll be, that's all we want. Show us the Father. And you, you can see that there in verse um, um Hate. Philip said to him, Lord, show us Father, and it sufficeth us. So what we're seeing here is a reply to Philip's request to start with. Um, look, Philip's, a reply to Philip's request, Lord, show us the Father. Yeah. Um, this is uh, verse 10. Go to verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. And he do, do is the, and I put an and there if I was writing this, because there's two things dealt with. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words I speak are the Father's words. So and we already knew that, right? The, that you can see that in verse 10. The words that I speak are the Father's words. But there's another thing. And the works I do are of the Father. Do you see that? Yeah. At the very end, it doesn't say words again. He doeth the works also. So it's God, it's Jesus, as a man on the earth, is saying the works that I do, the Father is doing those works. 
And the words I say are from the Father. There's nothing of me. It's all of the Father. He's telling his disciples. And this for us today, it was for the disciples then, of course. Um, he works through me. He speaks through me. Right? Now, what do we know so far about Jesus' works? Tell me something about because we've been talking about him a little bit. What were Jesus' works? Healing. Healing. Forgiving. All kinds of healing. Forgiving. Forgiving. Yep. Turned water into wine. Just a plain miracle. Water into wine. Yeah. Yes. Preaching. Preaching. Yes. Teaching. Teaching. He walked on the water. Walking on water. Feeding the 5,000. Yeah. Calming the storm, right? Right. There's so many things. But Jesus is saying, all those things that I do, it's, it's the Father working in me, working through me. He's work, He's using me. You see me. You don't see the Father. But everything that I'm doing and saying is of the Father. Um, verse 11 Let's look what he says here in verse 11. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for, for the very work's sake. So he's saying here, <clears throat> look, believe me. Just believe what I'm telling you. I'm in the Father. That's called faith. Just believe me, right? Believe what I say, which is faith. Or do this. Believe for the works that you see. So one or the other... Just believe that I am who I tell you that I am. Because I say it, believe it. That would be the best way, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But then you've also seen my works for three and a half years. You've seen my works. So believe me for the... If you've got to have the works to believe, that's all right. What do we know about Jesus' work? Well, they were of the Father, but what else do we know about the Father? Uh, the works, excuse me. We looked at it last week. It's a great verse. Keep your finger there, but just go back to chapter 5 real quick. We're only going to read one verse this week. We read about 8 last week, 6 last week. John chapter 5, verse 36. 5, 36 of John. Now we're going to go back to 14. 5, 36. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The same works that I do. Now look at what he says. The works bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Okay? That's, that's very important. Look, believe, just believe me. Just believe what I've said, that the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. Have faith that what I say is true or believe me for the very, or for just the works that you see. And, and looking, we're, we're looking back in verse 11 again. We see there in verse 11 that um, the whole basis is this. However you come around it, believe, right? Have that faith. That, that's faith unto salvation. This is, that's why he came. The very point that Jesus came, right? Son of man has come to seek and to save those that were lost, that are lost, whatever. But, but believe, and then we see that they bear witness. So, so Jesus is saying, God, it's God's works through me. It's God's uh, words through me. They prove that I'm sent from God. They prove that I'm sent from God. That's a huge deal, isn't it? It's a huge deal that this man they followed for three and a half years is claiming something nobody else has ever claimed successfully, at least, that Everything I do is of God, and they prove that God sent me. They bear witness that God has sent me. Um, that was the important thing, that he came and that people would believe that's who he was as he walked the earth. I am the Savior. I'm the promised Savior from Genesis 3, 15, or yeah. whatever, on. The promised seed of the woman. Um, And now to all these sorrowing servants is more real hope given. So he's already given them some hope earlier on in chapter 14. 
I'm going to prepare a place for you. Right. And if I go prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Right? Wonderful promise. I'm coming back and we'll be together forever. But now he's giving them more, more instruction. They're going to be left behind. Yes? They're staying. Right he's going. So <clears throat> he's coming again, he says. But And he just tells them all about himself again. I am in the Father. Believe me or believe the works because they're the Father's work. Believe my words because they're the Father's words. And now the promise, and this is what we're, I'm trying to get to tonight, is this promise that he gives in these next verses, starting in chapter um, 12. In verse 12, not chapter 12. Why do I do that all the time? You know? Uh, I blame age. What? <laughs> to confuse us. Yeah, it could be that. Uh, could just, so, uh, and I'm confused. Uh, I could be. No. No. Sometimes I'm confused. You can ask Don once in a while. I have to look off. Sometimes a lot off. She's going, yeah? Okay. <laughs> So let's remember where we are so far. Now is going to come uh, a big deal, what I think is, and it is. Chapter, uh, verse 12. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now I want you to I want you to think about what, what we're talking about here. There's some works being talked about, works and words. Yes? We go all the way back up to verse one and following where he says, I'm going to prepare a place. That's a work. Yes, it'll be out of sight. We won't see any of that, right? But that's what he's said that he's going to do. But then then he talks about I'm in my father. Believe that. The words I just spoke were on my father. He's telling you through me that I'm in him. Believe those words. They're of God, right? Yeah. You believe God, believe also in me. He says that earlier in chapter 14. You believe God and you should, but believe me because I came directly from him. The works I do and the words I say prove he sent me. They're his words, they're <clears> his <throat> works. And now he's saying, look at here, what a... You, my friends, my disciples, are going to be able to do the exact same thing that I've done. Think about that. And greater things. Let's read it again. There, verse 12. I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Because I'm going. I've got to go. He says that in another place where we won't turn there, but it's in one of these, chapter 14, 15, 16, one of those three. I've got to go. If I don't go, I can't send a comforter. That's the big deal. So I'm going to my father. And because I go to my father, you all that believe in me will do greater works than I have done here on this earth. Greater work. Now, when we say greater, we're not talking about anything except quantity, not quality. In other words, why don't you think about this? You had before, well, we can just go to Acts. We could, but let's go back to, let's go back to the 12. They went door to door, right? Preparing the way for Jesus. They went door to door to prepare the, the way Jesus was going to come visit those little towns later. So he was saying, you go ahead of me, prepare the way. And he was going to tell, they were, they were going to tell them about repentance, of course, and remission of sins, of course, right? That was a right. whole deal. And the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming, right? And, and his name is Jesus. He's going to talk to you, right? He's going to be here. Um, and they were given the power to show they were from God also. Yes, they cast out de demons. They healed the sick, right? Mm -hmm. They were given that, that power. So uh, this is what I'm saying. He, before Jesus even said this to them here at the end of his life on the earth, before verse 12 was spoken, 
He had already given them that same power. Now, how could it be greater? Well, there's 12 of them doing it. Yes? True. Later on, he sends out 70. He gives them the same power that he had to go out there witness and to prove they were sent from God. Same reason he did them, to prove he was from God. The same word that he spoke was to prove that he was from God. They were God's words, God's works. And so those disciples, those 70, they're given the same thing. So they're going 70 at a time. One Jesus, 70 at a time. 12, 12 here, one Jesus. Do you see the quantity, the number of, of miracles that are going to, greater works, more works than I've done on this earth you'll do. You go back and you see one man preaching on the day of Pentecost. And lo and behold, 3,000 people mm. got saved. Mm. That's that's an, that is beautiful. That's amazing thing. And, and the Bible says this isn't maybe the numbers who got saved. That's it. Right. That wasn't like, well, the, I made a profession. No, these were 3,000 saved people. And we know that they went out from there in that town, the city of, of Jerusalem, and, and they told friends who also got saved. And, and we know right after that, the, lame, the other lame man never walked before. He gets healed in simple little, I mean, just a couple little sentences. And 5,000 people got saved. And, and they're celebrating all over the place. Their, their lives have changed. That is another miracle. How did they, listen, if you'll remember earlier on in Acts, it says, they were, oh, in fact, we should probably look since I'm teaching it. I didn't look it up. Do I want to now? Yeah, I do. So we can look and we can see here in one of these earlier um, uh, chapters, chapter um, Acts. Acts chapter 4, and we can, I turned right to it in that a minute. Yeah. Chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Look back, look back at verse 30. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. This is signs and wonders going on all the way through this. Signs and wonders. The day of Pentecost was signs and wonders. So... It had already gone on, so this isn't anything new, but he's teaching them, and he's, he's teaching us the same way because it's for us today, the same scripture. He's saying there, back in our chapter, in, in John 14 and verse 12, you who do believe on me will do the same works as the Father has done through me. Now, I want you to think of those words. Jesus is God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the promised one. Right. There'll never be another one. He is the Messiah promised. He is the Savior of mankind, the only way mankind is saved. And creation rids itself of the curse is through Jesus Christ. And he is telling the early apostles, you will receive the same power as God gave me to draw men to you. Yes, yeah. not, not to you as apostles, to what you're saying. The same power. That's an amazing promise. And again, remember the context. He's leaving. I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to come back. Then we'll never part. But here's something else for you to chew on, apostles. The same power that God the Father has given me, I'm going to give to you. You, all, you that believe me will have the same power as I have for the same reason. It wasn't to thump their chest and say, look at me, look at me. It was to draw 
all men to Jesus. Remember that, that, that verse that says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, Jesus said. And, and that, that meant the crucifixion, but it also meant you're with your mouth. Yes, being lifted up meant crucifixion, but it also means the way you talk about him in your life. What does your life say about Jesus? Our lives, right? And, and does our mouth ever work? Do we ever say the words of God? Like Jesus said, the words of God, the apostles, when they went out, were saying the same words and doing the same works. And it was through Jesus Christ. And, and he says, and your works, there in verse 12, your works will be greater <clears throat> because I go to the Father. Yes, I will leave you to be back with the Father, but because of my absence, you will be enabled to do more than I've done. Yes, you will be enabled. To do. I am leaving you, the comforter that's been with you all this time, the one that's done everything. Right. I've given you power to go out, but all the other times you're with me, and I'm the power. I'm always the power. I'm always the one speaking. I'm always the one preaching and healing. And, but when I leave you, I'm going to enable you to do those same, same things. What a wonderful plan, isn't it? What a wonderful God that is. I don't know if you're excited about it. I got excited as I read this today. Um, you will listen. <clears throat> Our story in Acts only concerns Paul and Barnabas, and I've already mentioned this, but think about it. We had Peter, John, we just read some of it. They did likewise. All the other apostles, look, look this is just a story about they got Mark. No, no, well, not, no one, Matthew, Luke. Luke traveled with them. Luke wrote Acts. I knew I'd come to it. I don't know all 12 of them, so I don't know. Luke recorded what was going on, but had Luke traveled with Peter, we, we would have seen the same things going on. If, if Luke would have traveled with, um, uh, name another apostle, uh, another disciple. James was dead. John. Oh, if he had traveled with John. You say, how do I know that? Well, it wasn't recorded. Well, how do I know that? They all died a martyr's death. Mm -hmm. and they, they did what they were supposed to do until they died, until they were murdered. Yes? They didn't, the people they went to were all over the world. They didn't want to hear what they had to say, so they killed them. Had no argument for it. So let's just kill them. Um, so we go on. There's, there's more here in, the, in this passage. We're in verse 13. I'm going to read 13 through 18 because it goes together. And this kind of ends the thought for tonight. It can't be seven, can it? Did we start on time? Oh, good. No, it's not. <laughs> seven or two. <laughs> 13. Verse 13. Now remember, listen. This all goes together. <clears throat> Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall I do also, and greater works than these shall I do, all, do because I go unto the Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you have anything, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he, he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth in the Lord, world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And, and the, yeah, we ended there. So this here's the enabling right here when it talks about asking. And I mentioned this earlier about the Holy Spirit asking for us. And we'll, we'll turn to that in just a second. I think we've got time to. We see that... Um, this is the enabling. Remember, what was my statement? I'm leaving you to be with the Father, but I'm going to enable you who are left behind, you who believe in me that I'm leaving behind you, we are, I'm going to enable you to do the very same works and more than I've done, right? Right? That's while I'm gone. That's what you're going to be busy doing now. You're going to be busy doing those works. 
I'm going to enable you. So here's the enabling. As God the Father enabled me, how did God the Father enable Jesus? He spoke through him and he did works through him. Yes? Yes. So here's, here's Jesus Christ in a human body, but he's enabled by the Father to do these works and say these words. He's enabled, as God the Father enabled Jesus, words and work, to draw all to himself, to glorify the Father. So, says Jesus, so I will enable you to do greater works than mine, which also will draw all men to me and glorifies both the Father and the Son. Okay, so why is that important? Remember the verse 536 of John, the works bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So these works that they're going to enable him to do and the words that they say, they will also do the same work they did for Jesus. They drew people to Jesus, and through Jesus, they knew the Father, right? There's no way to the Father except through the Son. 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 They were drawn to the Son so that they would know the Father, and they would be saved. Their, their sins would be remitted. They would repent. They would lead a different life. So we're seeing those disciples that are left behind are given the same power to do the same thing. So Jesus has gone on, but there's somebody left here carrying on that identical work, yeah. right? The, in the same way, same kinds of works and the same words as Jesus used. They'll draw all men unto the Father and the Son and glorify. Think about this power also of Jesus. Jesus himself per performs these signs and wonders but also what power he has when he is able also to give those who believe in him the identical power. Power to do all those, but now I'm going to say, all of y'all that believe, you got the same power. Now, I don't even have to touch you. You've got the power. Walk out of here and witness. Just go on out there. That's power, isn't it? That's it's right. power to be able to not just do the works, but to enable others to do the works. The enabling... <laughs> All glory to God to draw all to Jesus, the Savior, um, those, the power that he gave to them. <clears throat> the enabling told of is through the Holy Spirit, who is another comforter. Now look at the work, these, these verses here. This is the asking. Um, the asking in context. Read verse 13 and 14. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I want you to look at that. What's he talking about in the asking? He says anything, but in context, what is he asking? What is he telling them that they, what's he, uh, he doesn't say what he expects them to ask for, but what does the context say that he's talking about? What would they be, what would they be asking for? In, in the context, what has he just talked about? Greater works than these you'll do, right? So, here, they would be asking for him to do the same work through them as he did through Jesus' his son, right? right? The asking would be this. This man that, that Paul approached that had never walked, we said he didn't pray. My contention is, and you all agree when I said it before, that the Holy Spirit prayed for him. In that moment, he received power to have this man simply by words rise up and walk and leap, the verses say, right? So the asking could be anything because he doesn't limit it, but I believe that what he's saying in context of saying this is, Whatever you need as you go out here, right. yes, I'll give it to you. Why? Because I'm building my church through you. Remember that? That's what Acts is. It's the building of the church. Jesus said there in Matthew, where he said, on, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, right? So he's building his church. So he's saying, I'm leaving. 
but I'm leaving a whole bunch of you guys behind and everybody believes on me, just ask. Whatever you need to get it done, I will supply. I will supply. Um, all things needed to complete the task at hand would be supplied by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And I say here, sometimes and very often the Spirit asks for us because we don't really know. How does that work? I think it, it works because we don't know how to do, but we're in contact with the Lord. I think sometimes we're praying, we're praying, we're feeling close to the Lord, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit's praying what we really need because we don't always know. Look, if you would, this will be the last time you have to turn, I promise. Okay. Look in Romans 8, 26 and 27. Romans 8, verse 26 and 27, we see. Remembering that the Holy Spirit is in every one of you, if you're, you're a believer. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know, what does that mean? Oh, weakness? Like, yeah. I'm in the middle of nowhere, and they, they tried to kill me right up the road in Iconium, and now I've got, I'm preaching again, and here's this guy right here, and rise up and walk, and he does. Who prayed for him in that moment? He didn't. Who prayed for the Holy him? Holy Spirit. Believe. Holy Spirit <clears throat> enabled. That's enablement. If he did it for Paul... He does that for us also. Un we may not know that, but let's look, read the verse. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the prayer for us by the Holy Spirit is always according to the will of God. And what is the will of God? He's not willing that any should perish. Yes? That's right. And he is willing that we would do his will. He is willing for that. That is what he wants. And we need to be enabled. Yes? We, you, we can't do it ourselves. It's, it's an impossible. We can do some of it. But we'll soon get tired or we'll get maybe bored with it. I don't know. <clears throat> this then in our text is seen, in our text is seen the promise of Jesus Christ once more enacted. In our text in Acts, we see this promise that we just talked about in John 14 enacted. <clears throat> it would be like Jesus saying, I have done great things among you to draw you and to prove that God the Father has sent me to save you. Um, and in John 20, he says, As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. <clears throat> You're fully equipped to prove whose you are. That's for us. You are fully equipped to prove whose you are. Who do you belong to? These men that work, listen, the, the, the people that went out, these people we're talking about, they did the signs and, and wonders. They were fully equipped to prove who they were so that people would be drawn to Jesus and then they'd know the Father, right? We also are, I'm not talking about you and me making miracles. I'm, not, I'm talking about proving who we are. We are also equipped to prove who, who we belong to. Uh, and the purpose of God would be to glorify God and to draw everyone to salvation. So our lives should be different. Our words should be different. We should have a witness that comes up always ready for the reason, for the hope that's in you. The Bible says, why are you like that? Well, let me tell you, I know I'm going, where I'm going, I'm going to take my last breath, right? Always ready, always ready. Clean living apart from sin not taking part in anything evil. Not, not, but then the positive side is always reading, always praying, always seeking God's will. And then knowing this, 
you got a Holy Spirit that in whatever situation you find yourself in and you want to witness, you're equipped. Holy Spirit is going to give you just what you need. He's the power behind the words that you speak to that person. Yes? You have to say them. The disciples had to say the words. The power was not of them. It was of the Lord. It was Holy Spirit enablement. Anybody have any uh, comments? I know it's late. So. I have a question. Go ahead. So John has a question. God the Father and Jesus the Son gave the disciples and the 70 the power to do works, signs, wonders, miracles, healing. And in the passage, it talks about um, anything you ask. Do you think that God still does that today to people, give them the power to do any of that, signs, wonders, miracles? Uh, I've heard missionaries say that it's happened. Uh, they were in places that were had absolutely no way of having uh, scripture. It wasn't even written in their language. Uh, I can remember uh, a missionary talking at uh, Broadway where um, he, he watched them walk across hot coals and he was invited to do the same thing and he did and he didn't get burned. I'm just passing it on, folks. I've, I wasn't there. So I think that it can't, God can do that. What, what we're asked to do is without seeing, believe. Bible says, blessed are those who have seen and believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Right. So it's both. It's both, right? So we can, but I don't believe. He is, he is all powerful. Yes. All knowing. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I've never seen, you know, except for those false teachers on TV, but I've seen people be healed that should have died, but not by a person touching them or any of that, but through prayer. Mm -hmm. right. So if the yeah. Bible, my, uh, I guess my question or thought is if he gave, I know he can do whatever he wants to do because God has all that power. There's, there's got to be, well, I don't know. I don't want to get too involved. I just, I, I think that you can't limit, we can't limit God in saying, well, no, it doesn't happen today. You know, it only happened for those 12 and those 70, unless the Bible says somewhere that it stopped. Right. That's just my thought. There's a passage that says, now, now abide with faith, hope, and share to these three. Right. And it names all the other things. Now abide just these three, faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. Right. Now abide with these three. In other words, there came a time when, this is what many of us believe, there came a time when there were no miracles needed, and that was when Scripture was here. So that we read and we believe what Scripture says. Um, I knew nothing about Jesus' miracles when I got saved. You know? I, I mean, I didn't. I've been to church. I never thought about any of those things. I don't know what I learned when I was a little kid. I was always in church. But when I got saved, I got saved because I knew I was a sinner. And Jesus paid for them. Right. And I was happy because I didn't like what I'd done. Did anybody get saved because of miracles? Oh. I mean, your salvation is a miracle. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, that was, there was, there was no, there was no way to prove anything except by those miracles. And that would draw you in and he would tell you your need and you either believed or walked away. And now today is, you simply hear what Scripture has recorded, 
and you either believe or walk away. But you would, it sounds like you're suggesting that when all of those died, with all those that were martyred died, that stopped after, because they've written the the word. It may not have been in this form yet, but when John died, I don't know if he was the last one, but yes. when John died, then it, the suggestion is that those things ended. I don't know when they ended. Because the seventy had the, they weren't apostles, right? And they made they weren't ma- martyred. I, I think when when the church got to where it had something to do with the Bible being put together, yes, it did have that, something to do with that. But uh, um, I don't think that there's any. Day. He equips us in a different way. Like if, if you witness somebody and they get saved and you can see it changing their life. Sure. And that effort, well, there's no miracle there that you perform for that. It's simply by faith. Well, if they can learn do that by faith, then right. they don't need the sight. They don't need to see to see anything. Anybody else got comments on that? Right. Like you say, Ali, we have to believe it. Because I have, one time in my life, I was feeling something in my brain coming on, and I wasn't able to take, and I went to a pastor and asked him, please, I need to you help me touch my head to, again, receive the healing. And I did believe about God can heal you, and it did. Right. So you had to just believe it. I thought about Janice Coughlin while I was writing this today, and I know she wasn't healed, but she surely, not Coughlin, Janice Ritchie, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Janice Ritchie. Right. Um, I think it was over three years mm-hmm. or something, yeah. and she was supposed to be dead as soon as she stopped the treatments. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That's a miracle, and it was just prayed for. Yeah. You, you know, by her and, and people around her, and the church prayed for a lot. Um, let me read this again. This is John 14, 12. I've read it a couple times. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe... That's not it. Wait a minute. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me? The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father which dwelleth in me, and he does the works. Then verse 11. Believe me. Just believe. This is faith. Have faith that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or believe me for the works. So we're seeing these, both these things now. Even back then, before the Bible was written, where there were all these acts of... Uh, and there were people getting saved without those, probably, too. Oh, and sure. There, there weren't yeah. any signs and wonders, but... So there was both going on, and that was to get the church being built and getting getting going just really a, the emphasis well there is people that just heard Peter's preaching or yep. Paul's preaching that came to know Christ yes w- without any signs and right. wonders so sure. you believe you simply believe by faith what you read about Jesus and what you know about it or you see signs and wonders and you believe that that's who he is because of the signs and wonders and today we don't see because we have all of this. It's recorded, all the things that he did in the signs of one that says the Bible. Right. And they're here. So that's what we sort of believe. I believe that uh, faith goes a long ways in when we pray. Yeah. I have had answered prayers. And I have had prayers that <coughs> We're not answered. Sure. Well. And some people uh, went to be with the Lord that I had prayed for healing. Sure. But that doesn't destroy my faith. That's right. My faith is solid in Jesus Christ and God would work wonders on his for us as we need them. 
but it doesn't destroy my faith if he doesn't answer my prayer because he did it his way. Right. And his way is right, yep. no matter what my way is thinking. True. Well, I think that you express to God in prayer what your heart wants. That's my, that, that's my wife. Or for the ladies, that's my husband. Right. They really need you. I really want you to raise them up. And you're telling them your heart. He wants you to tell them. Sure. Even if that spouse leaves, he wants that nearness with you. Right. Continue. And if that draw you nearer, then so be it. It drew you nearer. Yes? Yes. Isn't that where you want to be found? Exactly. Absolutely. And and what you say is right because you didn't get your answer. He got his. Your God got so he gave me his him. answer to me. Yeah, absolutely right. And 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 he l listen, he's glorified in, right. in your prayer. You went to the only one that can do for that spouse. He didn't, but that's his will, which is way above ours, right? But he got, just remember when Peter was going to be killed the next morning? Mm -hmm. Right. And everyone's praying. praying. Oh, everyone's praying. And he gets out of there. Well, and, and one of the points of that when we were looking at it was God had the whole community on their knees. That's mm -hmm. where he wants all of us all the time. <laughs> he wants us in... <coughs> The same relationship as he had with Adam before sin, which is constant, loving, perfect relationship. And that prayer is as close as we're going to get to that constant, loving, perfect relationship until we're with him. Yet it is. That's, right. That's why he wants it. That is our relationship is a pray, learning, praying Relationship. Oh, that's good. We got to stop, right? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. I was just going to say this isn't a sign or a miracle, but it's so amazing how you can be talking to someone and God will, or the Holy Spirit will give you a scripture that you haven't thought of in forever mm -hmm. to share with that person. Um, that happened to me recently with my granddaughter. And Afterwards, I was just amazed because I had not thought of that scripture in probably years. And it came to my mind. And mm -hmm. why was that? Because the Holy Spirit knew that she needed to hear it. And he does that all the time. You were being enabled. Yeah. Just yes. like he promised his folks yeah. in John 14. And it's playing out there in Acts. It's yeah. playing out today. Yes, it's playing out today. I've heard people say the same thing as you said that... Oh, they had never thought of it that way. It's like it was like the fog was lifted, and it gave them some clarity. Which you, you need to have some clarity to be saved, right? Like I am a sinner, buddy. <laughs> you know I have, and Jesus saves, right? Alan, yes. at the fairground this year, um, we were out there, you know, trying to witness to people. And I was working with a lady from up Northern Virginia, and she pulled this young guy over. He was, I don't know, 16 or 17. And she just started talking to him, and she gave him a verse, and she said, read this verse out loud, and he did. And she said, are you interested in learning about the Lord? And he said, yes, ma'am. And so she turned to me, and she said, do you want this to her? And I'm telling you, the words come out of my mouth Amen. that I don't have sense enough to say that good. I'm, I'm just being frank with you. And and it's not about me, it's what he did. That's right. Right. But I got through and I prayed for that child. And the lady said, Did you accept Jesus? And she, she said, Yes, ma'am, I yeah. did. Amen. But it wasn't Amen. me. I right. mean, he That's just right. took over. So he will equip you. He does. And and yes, does. it's easy to be intimidated when you're trying to witness to somebody, you know. But if you just rely on the Holy Spirit, you he don't will. take any thought in Bible said, just say what, what's there. If it's your own story, do it. Go run with that. He will if it's a verse on it. Run with that. I, I can remember going out door to door with um Pastor Maggard and them. There were three of us one day. 
I was with Wayne, the, the missionary that's dead now, and another guy, I don't remember who it was. And I sat down with the head of the house. There were like six people in that house. I sat down at the living room table with him. And I'm just going, just like what you just said, I'm going, what in the world is this? It's, and the guy said, are you a pastor or something? I said, no, no. We just go door to door telling you about the Lord. But all of those words were just just like they're supposed to be, right? right. And surely, I, didn't, I mean, I can't even follow my notes. Right. <laughs> Anybody else? I know you all want to go home from that, don't you? It's 8.30. No, I know. I said, you, you look. It's on the same. Let's pray and I'll stop. Lord, we do thank you. What a wonderful lesson once more. Your word is given us, Lord, in there. There's more there than was even taught. It may have actually spoken to some of us here in a different way than what I intended. But, Lord, you intended different more answers given to people. There may have been comfort. Lord, there may have been a veil lifted over their understanding, Lord, to where they understand something that was not understood. But all these things are you. Lord, give, give us the faith that we had for salvation, you, to have that same faith that you would equip us to tell the gospel to whosoever, Lord. And we'll thank you for your work. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Amen.